About six years ago, I came up with a design called a balancing buoy, and there's been many versions of it. And the one you see here coming into focus slowly is my favorite version of it. There are many aspects about it that make it difficult to create and especially to balance. To be perfectly honest, there are so many nuances to this design that it's downright annoying to make. In fact, just the ratios, the size of the flotation on the bottom, the height of the superstructure that's above the flotation, getting all that stuff right, that is hard enough on its own. And then fine tuning and getting the balance just right is a whole other nightmare. So let's start with the flotation. You have to make a circle. But if you don't have editing skills, this is how you do it, with welding. And over the years I've become so downright obsessed with this design that I've actually created custom elbows to create this custom proportioned ring. You can buy 90 degree elbows everywhere, in fact that's what I did at first. But I kept wanting longer and longer radii so that I could create a more open circle, thereby allowing a larger range of motion for the buoy. So I created custom ones. Okay great, now we got the large round custom ring, let's move on. Over the years I used to just kind of eyeball making the triangle structure above the ring, but now I create a jig. Cut three rods equal size and weld them together into a triangle, easy. But this next part is not quite so easy. So you take a half inch by eighth inch thick steel flat bar, then you find the center of that and square it up perfectly before you bend it. And I bend it about 60 to 70 degrees. And this little piece is essentially the thing that makes it all balance. So then you take a small eighth inch rod and create this small pin. And it's really important that you weld it exactly in the middle and exactly straight up. And you can see it already balances. And you can move that little pin forward, back, left, right to make that thing balance square. And it's important you do it right now. So once that pin and little bend are balancing perfectly, you can roughly attach it to the ring. Now this section is very crucial. So you take that piece and you tack weld it to the ring and I turn it 90 degrees at a time, making sure that it doesn't lean one way or the other. If it does, I can break off the welds and put it into a different position so that it does balance perfectly. Once that critical phase is complete, we can bring back the triangle jig. And off camera, I cut quarter inch round stock into three pieces, four inches long, and I tack them to the corners of that triangle jig. And that triangle jig is not tacked to the ring. So once all three of those quarter inch round rods are tacked into place, evenly spaced and evenly bent into their triangular formation, I can weld them up. But look at that, that's heat distortion. That actually moves the rod that much. Watch it again. That messes with the spacing every single time I weld. So as I'm doing this, I have to make sure that it remains evenly spaced. And if it's bent one way or the other too much, it becomes uneven. I'm telling you, this thing is annoying. But we can bring that jig back and ensure that it remains even, making sure that all the rods are touching all the corners evenly. Once about 80 to 90% of the weld is done around the quarter inch rod, I can comfortably go in and fill in that last awkward section without worry of the heat distortion. And between every one of these cuts, I am definitely testing the balance each time to make sure that nothing has gotten thrown off. And now it becomes less annoying. Just less annoying. It's still annoying though, because building this up, while it is kind of more fun now, it feels like Legos, but you have to build Lego parts first. You see there? I had to rip that part off because it wasn't quite lined up with the other one. Because you're attaching a round rod to a round surface, it's not exactly secure. You have to kind of go in and tack weld it and make sure that it is flush, it is straight, it is not too far out, too far in, that it is even with the last one, and this is just making a little triangle. So I think you can begin to see what I mean when I say this thing is annoying. As you're building this structure up, any weight that is above that pin that it balances on is simply counteracting the weight that is below the pin. That big beefy ring has a lot of weight to it, so as we build the structure up, it counteracts that, allowing it to sway back and forth nice and smooth. From here, the rest of it is up to artistic interpretation, as well as just getting the balance to be as smooth or as fast as you like it. If you were to stop here, the motion is very fast because there's not enough weight counteracting the big ring below. So you have to add details like this ring or anything else you can think of. It's kind of up to artistic interpretation from here, as long as the balance remains the same. And as long as you add everything symmetrically and equally, the balance will always remain the same. Just keep the weight consistent. Here, for example, I'm adding brackets simply to add more weight up top. This was the first buoy that I made nearly seven years ago, 
It's amazing to see just how much has changed. I came up with the idea of using that metal ring as a counterweight and then building a structure up and it just kind of popped into my head. I didn't even know that it would work. And now here we are seven years later where I finally feel like I've perfected this design. Even though I struggle with it every single time I make it, I seem to improve a little bit each and every time. Well, I hope you found this video informative and maybe it'll inspire someone to create something else. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.